What's going on guys? Dr. Jabal, MedSchoolInsiders.com. So in this video, got a special treat for you all. It's the one and only Dr. Tommy Martin. So he is a MedPeds resident in Arkansas and he recently graduated from St. George's University, which is a medical school in the Caribbean. So I made a couple of videos on the Med School Insiders channel about, you know, MD versus Caribbean. You know, is it worth it going to Caribbean? Things like that. So it is kind of a controversial topic. You know, I, I, I do get occasional, you know, comments for people that, that vehemently disagree with me. So I figure why not bring someone who actually successfully went through the Caribbean process and, you know, see what they have to say. So without further ado, here is the one and only Dr. Tommy Martin. Kevin, thank you so much for that great introduction. Super excited to tell all of your viewers about my journey going to the Caribbean Medical School, matching the residency on the first go at it, and if they should even go to a Caribbean Medical School. Just quickly, as Kevin was telling you guys, I am a second year med PG resident at the University of Arkansas. Um, so practicing here, plan to eventually be a hospitalist. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm at in my journey right now. So Tommy, let's just dive straight into it. What made let's you choose going Caribbean versus MD or DO, which are the more traditional routes, which most pre-meds are you know, advised to take over Caribbean. For me, it was kind of a couple different reasons. I'd say, first off, I was very naive. Uh, you know, I didn't know much about any of it. Uh, second off, I graduated undergrad in three years. So I went through my program very quickly and I wanted to go to medical school immediately. I've always been extremely driven and I wanted to get through undergrad as fast as I could, um, get through medical school as fast as I could and start residency. And so that played a big factor into it as well. As I was going through undergrad, I did very well. Um, I finished with a 3.89 GPA. Um, majored in biomedical chemistry. And like I said, finished there in three years, but I knew nothing about the MCAT. I didn't know, and which sounds, for all of you pre-med students, you're like, wow, this guy, this guy must be an idiot if he didn't know anything about the MCAT. Uh, but I didn't know that it was that gonna be that hard. I was kind of naive and ignorant, I guess. And so I just thought I'd go take the MCAT and crush it. And it crushed me. So I made a 17 on the MCAT. Uh, which if you guys are with the new scoring system, all of you guys are, that's about a 487. Uh, so very, very poor. And so I'd already sent in my application to all of the US medical schools and everything like that. And so I was just waiting to hear back from them. And it was about December into hearing back from schools. I'd been getting rejections, of course, with that MCAT score. Um, I got put on the waiting list, which blew my mind at one school. And then in December, I got an email or a phone call from St. George's telling me I should apply for their January class. And I just said, I know nothing about Caribbean medical schools. I don't know you. I don't know why you called me. I'm not going. Uh, that was kind of like my, my take on it. And uh, then my aunt, she's a doctor and her uh, best friend is one of the biggest surgeons here in Arkansas. And he went to St. George's University and he called me and pretty much was like, Tommy, you really need to think about this. I went there. I was successful. I'm doing really well now. You should think about it. That is where the turning point kind of came. I was very torn on what to do. And so to be honest, I sat down and cried and prayed and asked God what I should do. And it was at that point um, where God gave me a sign that I should go to a Caribbean medical school. This was middle of December. Uh, so I applied, got accepted and started in January. So that's what made me decide to go there. Were you considering other options like other international schools, you know, Ireland, any, any other country, like someplace in Europe maybe, or was it pretty much just, you know, Caribbean or, or bust? For me, I knew nothing about anything except for this one Caribbean medical school and then all of these medical schools in the United States. So for me, I wasn't considering any of the other ones. Now that I look back on it, I should have done more research, but I think even with that more research, I would have ended up at St. George's University from what I know now. And so no, I wasn't considering other ones, but it is important for people to know there's probably countless medical school, foreign medical schools you could go to. So I don't want to make any assumptions, but I am going to say that the kind of the the idea that most, I guess, MD, US MD students have and, and probably most US DO students have is that going to the Caribbean is usually reserved for students who weren't able to get into US MD and DO programs. Do you think that's accurate? I don't mean to like be offensive in any way. That's that's like, is, is that the reason that most students would go to a Caribbean program? So when you say most, I would say yes. And I may be stereotyping as well, and people could be mad at me, but in my mind right now, I would say, yes, that's the big reason, but with some caveats, okay? And so with that being said, for me, I probably could not have got into a US medical school 
with that MCAT score. Okay, uh, for other people, it's their age, and but with them being too young, still means they wouldn't get into a U.S. medical school. There was a couple people that were very faith-based, very faith-driven that I know of that got into very prestigious medical schools in the United States and still chose to go to a Caribbean medical school, which blows my mind. And if I didn't believe in God also, I would tell them they were very stupid. Um, but so for most people, yes. When you say age, like I'm curious, what were some like the the younger the younger end of that spectrum? Because I also had some pretty young students in my medical school. 17 years old. Oh wow, okay, yeah, I think our youngest was like 19. And I think it was like an applicant who had tried when they were 17 and then 18 and then they finally got in when they were 19, which is like- It's insane, man. So I thought I was young. I started when I was, I think I was 21 when I started. I thought I was young. My wife started when she was 20, she was young. And then we had a classmate that was 17. And to think that she's gonna be an attending at, you know, 21 years old blows my mind. I, I definitely didn't have the maturity personally. So, so props to those people that are able to do it. So let's say a student can't get into a USMD or USDO school. At what point do you recommend, you know, now that you've done the whole process and you're, you're more familiar with it, what do you recommend for for what they should do next? Should they reapply a couple times? Should they go straight to, D, to, to Caribbean at the beginning? How should someone navigate it? You know, to be honest, that is such a hard question. And there are so many variables that you kind of have to dig into and tease out to make that decision. And so first off, every single person will have a different answer for that. And so I would say a couple different things to be thinking about that you have to think about. For me, I am a faith-based person. So one, I would say, what does God want you to do? So I'd say to be in deep prayer. If he, if you feel that he's leading you to go, um, then I would say by all means go. If you feel he's ask, telling you to wait and go to a U.S. school, I'd say do that. Second, think about finances, uh, depending where you're at in, uh, financially. And if you're willing to live a very frugal life for a while to pay back student loans. Why do I say that? Um, depending on what Caribbean or foreign medical school you go to, it can be very, very expensive. Uh, and so, for example, uh, I think from St. George's, and I'm speaking for a very large population of students, but I'd say very few of them get out of medical school with debt less than $350,000, if not less than four hundred thousand dollars you know and so that is very considerable amount of money and i think u.s schools and kevin you can tell me if i'm off on this but i think it's maybe 180 to two hundred thousand that they're in debt the average is like 198 thousand most recently yeah. you could see that that's a lot more money that you have to pay back and the interest on that's obviously compounding so that's a big factor that you have to consider is if you're willing to take on the, that extra money. A third aspect I'd say is what your timeline is. You know, if you are say 40 years old and you're deciding to go into medicine now and you tried to get into US medical schools three or four times and it just still hasn't happened, you've tried DO route and it still hasn't happened, I'd say if you're still dead set and you think God's telling you to go to become a doctor, I'd say you might want to start trying the Caribbean because your, your, your time's ticking, right? And you don't have a whole lot more time to keep trying at the U.S. schools. You know, if you've tried three or four times, I'm, I'm strongly in support of going to a Caribbean medical school just because the way I look at it is if you go to a Caribbean medical school and you succeed, you're going to become a doctor. And when I say succeed, that means you get through it, you get through it, um, do well on your boards, you're going to get a residency spot getting doing well on your boards. And why I say that is if you take five years to try to get into a U.S. medical school, that is potentially five years of not attending a medical school in which... Uh, later correlates to five years of an attending salary. So on the front end, it may look like you lose a lot of money, but on the back end, you actually could have lost money by waiting to get into a, an MD or DO school. So I'd say those are kind of the main things to think about, but there's definitely a hundred more things you know to think about. If you don't want to go away from family, probably shouldn't go to a Caribbean medical school. If you have a kid, if you have you know multiple kids, maybe moving to a foreign third world country isn't the best idea, but people do it and do amazing. I have so many great friends that was at St. George's that had beautiful kids and they were completely fine. So lots of things to think about. Yeah, yeah, well, well said. I generally say to, to my students, try once, maybe twice going MD or DO. And if both of those times you're not successful, then consider Caribbean. And generally speaking, if someone's a reapplicant, there are usually things that they can fix in their application beyond just numbers, right? Because numbers are just one thing that we tend to focus on probably a little bit too much because they are objective and easy to compare. But when you're looking at personal statements and the actual, you know, your actual AMCAS work and activities, your letters of rec, there are, there's so many ways you can improve it. So generally speaking, 
I do recommend people at least try to reapply once. However, if they do want to go into something that's more competitive, and we can talk about this in more in depth, like the, the actual match outcomes. Yeah, if someone wants to go into plastics or derm or ortho or neurosurge, then I would say, you know, you should probably really shoot for USMD. And then if you can't do USMD, then do DO. And if you can't D do DO, then do Caribbean. But understand that each step, you know, from, from MD to DO to Caribbean, you are much less likely to earn that residency position in a hyper-competitive yeah. specialty. 100%. And I love St. George's. I loved everything about it. But even now with medical students that are telling me, I'm dead set, 100%, I want to go into plastic surgery. I would advise them not to go to a Caribbean medical school, not go to a foreign medical school, because if that is the case, it is extremely, extremely hard to make it there. Now it's possible, but it's Man, it's, it'll be one of the hardest things you've done. So I'm going to emphasize something you said. It is possible, right? Because, you know, I'm sure that someone has like a friend or an anecdote or whatever, someone who did it. It is possible, but it just, it's very, very, very rare. What are some of the pros and cons of going Caribbean? Because I think, I actually think that there's a little bit too much negativity towards going Caribbean. And I think we focus too much on the programs, which you could actually kind of explain through other factors, which, which we'll get to. But what do you think are some of the pros and cons? Yeah, for sure. So I'm going to start with the cons. Um... I, don't, I honestly don't have too many, and then I will love talking about the pros, so let's just get the cons out of the way first. One, this is, everyone knows this, so I shouldn't even need to say it, it is much harder to get a residency spot. With that being said, you need higher board scores to break all the cutoffs. After that, you probably need to go on more interviews to make sure you secure a spot. Um, with that, you have to think of the interview cost and all of those aspects. Going to a Caribbean medical school, not all of them are the same. St. George's is incredible because we have about I might be a little wrong on this, but they have about 50 affiliate hospitals where we can do third year and fourth year rotations where you're guaranteed a spot at. Not all Caribbean or foreign medical schools have guaranteed spots in the United States to do those rotations. And that makes a big difference when you get letters of recommendations. Um, so that potentially could be a con if that foreign medical school didn't have that guaranteed for you. Another big con, you are miles and miles away from your family most times. And that can be very hard. Just some personal experiences I had I want to say four family members that passed away that I didn't get to fly back home to go to their funerals. Um, my parents went through a very, very rocky period and I didn't get to be there for my family. Um, I missed the years of my nephew growing up from the age, you know, of three to seven because I was in a different country. And so there are definitely some big emotional strain. And with that emotional strain, if you don't have a good foundation, if it wasn't for my faith in God, uh, there's no way I think I could have taken the emotional beating, being away from all that stuff that happened. Not everyone has those hardships while they're gone and stuff, but it's still hard when you when you don't do too well on a test and you need a shoulder to cry on, your mom and dad or your best friends aren't around. But there's some pros to that, like on that side of it as well. And so I'd say being away from family is a big, big con. Some little things is that if you go to a foreign country they may, may not have your favorite pre-workout or your favorite protein powder <laughs> <laughs> you you would be bringing up pre-workout as that's the number one thing that they don't have okay so so for those who aren't familiar tommy martin is like super into fitness very very impressive in terms of like the feats he's done not only like the physical feats like athletically but even like how he's transformed his body in that period of time. So, so make sure you follow him on Instagram if you want to check that out. Oh, thanks, Kevin. I wouldn't say very impressive, but I've been trying, working hard. Joking aside, um, just even just your everyday things. So the soaps that you like, the deodorants, the detergents, the food, all that might be hard to come by, you know. So there was a time, in, oh gosh, I love Grenada, but there was a time when the whole island was out of cheese. You know, like the entire island, there was just no cheese, you know? And so if you wanted to have a taco night, it wasn't going to happen. Came over. So those are definitely, I'd say those are the biggest cons. The biggest one being it getting harder to get into residency. And of course, the expense of it. We talked about that already. So, so going back to the expense as a pretty big con, um, I mean, that's huge. It's almost twice, you said 350000 That's almost twice the amount of, well, yeah. not quite, but, you know, 198 to 350 is, is pretty large, especially when you incorporate that compounding interest. Is that because they have less um, like student loan options or is it because of the, the just the cost of the school is already higher? So you get student loans. Like if you are a U.S. citizen, the, you can get federal student loans to cover all of it. So you could definitely get loans for all of the expenses. Sorry, sorry. I'm, I mean, not not um, not getting student loans, not getting like uh, scholarships and grants is what I meant to say. So St. George's 
I think they've increased their scholarships by an absurd amount. So now there is a lot of scholarships, I believe, that they offer. And so when I went there, maybe not quite as much or I didn't know about them. Uh, so I know that they're definitely trying to help with the financial side of it. And don't quote me on the $350,000, um, but it, I, I'm pretty sure it's somewhere around that range. So what are some of the things that you enjoyed about going to the Caribbean for medical school? Uh, meeting my wife. That was a huge pro. I met my uh, beautiful wife, Phoebe, at St. George's, so that was awesome. Um, also, the fact that everyone is in the same situation as you, right? So everyone's away from their family. Everyone, this is their one chance to make it, right? Like this is their chance to become a doctor. So the drive and the passion and the camaraderie that you get there literally is insane, you know, like everyone's trying to help each other. Literally, it's like one ginormous family, right? Our class sizes were about a thousand students and I could pro I probably knew almost all of them, you know, and it's just because everyone was in it together. And that was so awesome to see. And when we go back to the States and we did our clinical rotations, people were like, wow, like, have you guys known each other forever? Like, no, we just uh, went to a Caribbean medical school together, you know? Um, so like that aspect of it, I wouldn't change for the world. Second part is the, um, Ability to immerse yourself into a different culture, into a different environment, and to kind of see what a third world country looks like. Um, I think that's something that every person should have the opportunity to see and to go help out in. And so being in the culture in Grenada, it was so awesome to get to know so many of the Grenadians, see what their lifestyle was like, see what their health hurdles are and how you can give back. So those things are very unique uh, in that what you see growing up in the U.S., you see every day, and you're going to see that as a doctor as well. But you don't necessarily know or see what's going on in different countries. And so being able to be part of that and make an impact in that was also pretty awesome. Some other of the pros, uh, let me think. Oh, it's hard. <laughs> it's, it's like extremely hard. Uh, the coursework was hard. They And why I say that's a pro is because they prepare you so well. Right. If you can get make it through at St. George's University and they give you all the resources, all the help, all the faculty to help you succeed. If you make it through, you are going to be prepared for your boards or you should be. And so that's a huge pro because St. George's knows your only hope of getting a residency spot is if you do well on your boards. So their whole objective, their whole objective is to help you to do well on your boards so that you can make it into residency so you can be a great doctor. And so the fact that it's hard prepares you very well for the boards, so you should succeed and do well on the boards. So that, in my mind, is also a huge pro. Last thing, the ability, this goes back to some of the other ones I was talking about, but the ability to do community service and the fact that everyone there gets involved in that. So there was multiple times on the island of St. George's um, where we would hold fundraisers and raise $15,000 in 10 days to renovate these bathroom facilities at a school because they had just been destroyed. Sending a kid to Jamaica to get a surgery and have to raise five to $10,000 to ship him there to get the surgery to save his life. And to have a school that gets behind that and could raise the funds in five days time blew my mind. And to be a part of that and witness that and to see love for humanity of people that you don't even know is awesome. And not that you don't see that in the States, but I, I think I just saw it so much more when I was at St. George's. That's awesome. So a big point of contention in the U.S. is the attrition rate being too high in the Caribbean and match rate being too low. And I think part of that is due to the institution, right? If you go to a U.S. program versus the Caribbean, um, you're at an advantage for, multi for multiple reasons. However, I think part of it is also just due to the student caliber. Because as we were discussing earlier, on average, a Caribbean medical student is not going to be as strong of a student. On average. So... So yes, you know, I'm sure that you have a 270, not, not you, but to the viewer who's commenting right now, I'm sure you have a 270 plus friend and, and whatever, but on average, they're not going to be as strong of students. So therefore, right. if you took those same students from the Caribbean, put them into a U.S. program, they would still also be less successful on average. Whereas if you took did the opposite, you take these MD students, you put them in a Caribbean school, they would probably do better than the average Caribbean student. Looking at these, these data sets is understanding the limitations of the data because you're not comparing apples to apples, right? You're, right. by definition, because the, the different levels of competitiveness of the programs, you're getting stronger applicants in MD programs and weaker applicants and, and weaker students in Caribbean schools. You know, I think I would agree with that to a pretty large extent and why, I mean, you can make the simple argument that the cutoffs to go to a Caribbean medical school are like lower than the cutoffs for an MD school or a DO school. And we also talked earlier why a large population of 
foreign medical students or Caribbean medical students go there is because they struggled or had a hard time or something was lacking in their application to get into a state school. So I think you could definitely make that argument and it makes great sense. But I think there's a couple things that muddy the water a little bit about that. And one would be just the, like I talked earlier, the emotional strain and being away from your family and all these other things that goes with going to a Caribbean medical school. So even if you take some of these really good U.S., you know, applicants, if you were to put them in the Caribbean, maybe they wouldn't make it either because of that emotional strain and things of that nature. And another thing is in the state schools, uh, maybe you take some of these weaker applicants and I say, I went to a Caribbean medical school. I am a weaker applicant. So no one shun me for saying that. One of the people that admits people into St. George's, like gets them into St. George's University. I was talking with him one day and I told him my MCAT score. He's like, and we let you in, you know, so like, I was at the bottom, okay? So no one get mad at me about that. But anyway, back to my point is if you take some of the Caribbean medical schools and put them into a U.S. medical school, I think those same applicants might have a higher success rate solely because of the fact that in the U.S. schools, the class sizes are much smaller. They have people kind of like holding their hands, walking them through the process, and they need lower board scores, you know? And so I think that there's a couple different things that muddy the water a little bit, but for the biggest majority or the the overlying picture, I think, yeah, that is correct. That the kind of people that have scored less on the MCAT, had a lower GPA, kind of struggled to get it to an MD school, they'd probably still struggle in a US school, but they may not either because of the extra help they get. Yeah, that's a great point. Well said. I, I think there are you know, the support systems in U.S. programs tend to be a little bit better from, from what I've seen. And for anyone who wants to have like a more in-depth analysis, like this video by no means is like, is a, is a full picture of the MD versus Caribbean debate. But, you know, th there are some videos on the Mesoquip Insider channel that I did. It was more structured, more organized comparing each aspect. So I'll leave a link in the description below for you guys to watch that. So Tommy, what are some misconceptions that pre-meds or just people in the U.S. overall have about Caribbean medical schools? For sure. So I know all you pre-med students are out there reading all the forums out there. And so the biggest one I would say is that it is impossible to get a residency spot if you go to a Caribbean medical school. I sit here as a second year resident um, in MedPeds at the my top ranked program. I only had to apply to match one time and I couples matched with my beautiful wife and we both went to a Caribbean medical school. Um, and again, uh, something I want to tell you guys, and again, I'm not saying this to boast by any means whatsoever, I share with you guys my low MCAT score, but my wife going to a Caribbean medical school, not doing the best on her boards, was able to get over 25 interviews to her pro, like her residency uh, program of choice, which is pediatrics. And I was able to get over 20 interviews for MedPeds programs. And that was both of us going to a Caribbean medical schools. And we were able, uh, we went on 15 of those interviews and couples matched at our top university. And so with that being said, it is very possible to match into residency and to go to your residency of choice if you go to a Caribbean medical school. But with that being said, remember everything else we just talked about. Okay, so remember that it comes with hardship. It comes with a lot of sacrifice, but it is possible in the end. So I'd say that is one huge misconception. Another one that I'd say specifically about St. George's that I read a lot in the forums is that there's no help, that you're just left, uh, you know, hung out to dry. And that is true if you do not seek out the help. There's 4,000 to 5,000 students on campus. If you don't try to get help, you're not gonna get help, right? But I needed help my first term. I got my butt kicked. I went from making a 3.9 GPA to where my whole chemistry class was given to me in the first week of medical school, and like I was drowning. And so I went and got help. I knew everyone on the whole campus by name, and I got the most help possible. And I'm not saying that they treated me any different, but they knew that I, like had this drive and passion to succeed and they had the resources for me. I just had to ask for it. And so I got tutoring. I got help on how to answer multiple choice questions, how to study better, how to study more efficiently. And after I went through these kind of programs that they helped me with, like I did extremely well at, at their university and on the steps and everything else. So misconception that there's no help, but really there is endless amounts of help if you ask for it. So now you've, you've done it. You went to a Caribbean medical school, you graduated, you're now in residency. Would you do it again? Would I do it again? You know, I was pretty personal with you guys and tell you um, about some family stuff that happened while I was gone and all of those things. But would I do it again? Without a doubt. 
It was the best experience of my life so far. And I'm biased and I will say that I'm biased because I met my beautiful wife uh, at the Caribbean medical school I went to. But even outside of that, the things that it taught me, the life lessons that it taught me, the integrity, the camaraderie, um, the hard work, the dedication, and just the zeal and passion for becoming a doctor, I think that translates into each and one of my patients today. There's not a day that goes by that I don't cherish being a doctor, that I do not feel the most grateful. Do I don't have the most, like I guarantee I have the most gratitude. I guarantee I am the happiest. I guarantee I'm the most jacked out of my face to be a doctor every single day. And why is because I went through that process and it was hard, but I made it through. Would I do it again? A thousand times over again. With the debt, would I do it again? A thousand times over again. With all the hardship I went through, a thousand times over again. I would have changed how knowledgeable I was about the whole process, but given the circumstances, I would do it all again. <laughs> Tommy, it's it's been such a pleasure having you on the channel. Um, thanks for you know being very open and honest about your own experience because I think that really offers a lot of value to pre-meds and just those who who are seeking guidance. So thanks for coming on. It was really a pleasure. Any any last words? Anything for the viewers? I'm gonna of course. By the way, guys, I'm gonna have links to. Dr. Dr. Martin's channel on YouTube, as well as his Instagram down in the description. So make sure you guys check that out. Kevin, first, I just want to thank you so much for having me on uh, your YouTube channel and to kind of talk about my experience in the Caribbean uh, medical schools in general. And just something that I'll just end with uh, to say to your viewers and the medical students, and then something that I always end my videos with, whether you go to an MD school, DO school, or a Caribbean medical school, it really doesn't matter. What matters is that you wake up every single day with your future patients in mind and that you have the drive and passion um, to study with all of your heart, um, to work with all of your heart and to do whatever it takes to become the doctor that you're supposed to be so that when you're sitting in the room with your patients, um, that all of that hard work and all of that passion that you spent working to be in that very moment shows forth in the way that you love them in the way that you serve them. It is an incredible honor and privilege to be a doctor. And so I don't care what route you go to get there, but cherish every single second of it. And don't forget how great of a privilege it is. And just know that if you guys ever need any help, whether it's a shoulder to cry on, someone to talk to, know that Kevin and I are here for you. And I know that I will be praying for you guys every single day as you guys are on this journey. To end with what I always end my videos with, and then I'll let Kevin I uh, close the video is that uh, I want you guys to know that you are greatly, greatly loved and that you're wonderfully and beautifully created and that you're capable of far more than you could ever imagine. Thanks so much, Tommy. See you guys next time. <laughs>